Whether your goal in life is really big and you have this big idea of something you want to launch or try or a new career, or it's a small goal, or it's a, let's be honest, it's a lose five pounds by summertime kind of goal, whatever it is, accountability can be a difficult thing. And there's a reason why a lot of people really suck at it, and there's also a reason why some people are really good at it. And today's episode might be different than what you expect because it comes back to talking a lot about intentionality and why. Why are you choosing these goals? And then how can you, knowing yourself well, set yourself up to conquer those goals and stay accountable and be intentional about how you're going to go after accomplishing those goals, big or small. I am so excited for today's podcast episode, but if you're new here, welcome. I'm Christine Lozada. I'm your host of Everyday Badassery. This is a podcast meant to inspire you to be just 1% better today than you were yesterday. And in this series, I'm helping you not to just be more badass in life, but more badass in your business or more badass in your career as a creator. And I'm so excited to introduce you to someone that I got to meet through actually a conference that I went to. It's not really a traditional conference conference. It's called World Domination Summit. And I went to the final one that they held, which was in Portland, Oregon. And it's a place where people just have an unconventional life and do shit different. And I met someone who is so accountable and also insanely positive. She's known as the cheerful mind. I need not say more. Let's bring her in. I am a mom of two, proud mom of two boys um, that are soon going to be both teenagers in a matter of weeks. And um, that's my number one job. But aside from that, I am a coach who uses an engineering approach to help people solve and um, streamline their lives in a way that is more fun and fulfilling um, and help them focus on what matters. So I'll, I'll go with that for now. I like that one. (laughs) Focusing on what matters. And that's not an easy thing to do, which we will start diving into some of these things in today's podcast episode. But one of the things that I love about April is that she is accountable. But we're not just going to talk about like the, oh, let's pat ourselves on the back part. Like we're going to talk about the ugly parts too. Oh, yeah. Um, But I would love to start with like, what is it? Because you... You help a lot of people to be accountable, which you'll be hearing more about in a minute. But like, what are some of the top things that people do that help them to stay accountable? I'm so curious. You know, I think when people say that they want accountability, some people are scared. Right. They, they're they just like, oh, no, 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 I'm seeing now. No, now I actually have to do something. And so you first have to be in that place where you want you're open and willing to be accountable um, in order to to take those steps. But, you know, it really all starts with claiming what it is that you're going to do and then finding what the strategies are that help motivate you to keep doing that thing. Mm. So it's different for everybody. So if I use myself for an example, I have to hold myself accountable um, to running because I don't love running, but I know that that's the way that I want to maintain my fitness. Mm. Um, I know that I want to ideally eat better. I'm not so great at that, but I, I need accountability to force myself. Um, and then, you know, yeah, so all the workout stuff, you know, really trying to focus on my mental health. So mm. making sure that I am getting the right amount of sleep, that I'm staying healthy. You know, some of those things are are the things that I need to be held accountable to. But how do I do that? I always need somebody to be checking in on me, right? Mm. So I have a life coach. I have a running coach. I have a nutritionist. I have Mm. all of these things that I have goals around. I know that what motivates me is having somebody who I can check in with and talk through the struggles, talk through the celebrations. Um, and, and that's how I do it. There are other things where, you know, I know that I want 
something to happen. I want my house to stay clean. So in order to stay accountable to that, I have a person who comes and cleans my house every two weeks, but then I have to keep cleaning my house to make sure that it's clean for them. <laughs> that's a, that's a common thing that people will say, like, I'm, I'm cleaning the house for the house cleaner. Um, I do that. <laughs> diff- different things like that where, you know, so it might be financial, you know, it might say like, Hey, I'm going to start a business. So I'm going to invest. And so I have to run this business cause I've mm-hmm. put down money. Um, and when I published my book, it was like, okay, I have, I'm paying, I'm, I'm putting this book out there. I might as well try to spread the word. And I kind of suck at that. So I'm going to hire a PR <laughs> to, mm-hmm, to help me mm-hmm. get the word out, get, get my name in Forbes, get my name in all of those things. So, you know, you can leverage that money to help hold you accountable because otherwise it'd be like, oh, I'll just do it myself or I just won't do it at all. Um, so trying to figure out those things um, that will help you, uh, do the thing. I so. love there's a commitment that you put in there in each of these aspects that help mm-hmm. you to stay accountable. And there there are two things in here that I want to double click on. So one is you talked about how you have all of these various coaches. And as an outsider, if you don't know April yet, like I just, you feel her badassery when you are in her presence. And 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 for some people, even for myself, I had that moment of where I was like, oh wow, like you have a coach or a coach is plural, like you have a fill in the blank. But it reminds me that we are always learning and growing in life. Because when you're not yeah. learning and growing in life, there's not a whole li- lot of life that's happening, right? There's not a lot of progression that's happening in your life. And I mm-hmm. think about some of like the greatest people out there. And I'm just going to give a silly example, which is The Rock. The Rock, I love his muscles. Like who doesn't love The Rock's <laughs> muscles? The Rock has a personal trainer. And I am reminded that even the people who already look great, who already know how to work out, still surround themselves with somebody who's going to help them keep progressing at things and or keep them honest and accountable for their goals. We all need a little bit of help and it can look different, right? In Mm -hmm. April's life. She has all these different styles of coaches or different things she has set up, whether she's paid for her PR person, she's paid for her house cleaner. I totally clean the house before the house cleaver comes. You have to, (laughs) but it's good accountability because like who wants to, you know, you don't want to make your house cleaner upset, but it also, (laughs) you don't want the house dirty anyway. So, you know, I'm every night I'm like, okay, there are certain things that she doesn't, or he doesn't, depending on who your house cleaner is, that they don't know how to clean. Like yeah. they don't know how to organize my my camera gear is scary. Yeah. Uh, and, and so or they, like, they'll put stuff in places that you don't want to. <laughs> so but it's keeping then you me can't find and it. us accountable for having yeah. those clean houses so that we can have a clear mind to do the things we want to do. So I love that you have coaches. And the second thing that you said that was in there was about like claiming, like claiming that you wanted to do something. Mm-hmm. And we're going to double, we're going to, you know, we're going to double click on this whole thing around commitment because I want to hear from yeah. you because you've dealt with a lot of people around um, accountability and being committed. But I want to share one quick example for me because I want to hear from you mm-hmm. a place in your life where it's hard for you to stay accountable for that thing or like a choice that you made. And a choice for me, for example, was I had a lot of people don't know this, but in an old life, when I used to be in the corporate world, I used to also be a group exercise instructor. Mm, I like taught group fitness and pink pants and spandex and all the things. And I also became a personal trainer during that time. I did this for 20 years. And one of the things that I realized in that time was that I was really strong in the gym, but I did not feel like an athlete. And that Mm. didn't feel good to me. That my strength happened inside of the four walls of the air conditioned gym. And I would, I I felt like I was dying. April's an amazing runner. I was, I would die when I'd go outside to run. And I told myself I wanted to commit to making myself feel like I was an athlete. And so I started signing up for triathlons. And if you don't know what a triathlon, it's a swim and then it's a bike ride and then it's a run. And I didn't know how to swim. And so the way I kept myself accountable, aside from reaching out for help from coaches, was every time that I wasn't with a coach, I needed to practice by myself. And I did not, like, did not want to go to the pool. If you go to the, if you go on beach vacations with me or scuba dive with me, you know, I hate cold water. Like anything less than 86 degrees is cold water to me. And so the way I would keep myself accountable 
is I would lay out my onesie bathing suit. I would lay out my swim cap. And this is the way I would make myself accountable. So like, let's say I woke up at, <laughs> I woke up at 10 a.m. that day, because that's what time I normally wake up at. And I was going to go swim at 3 p.m. that day. As soon as I woke up at 10, I would put leave-in conditioner thickly in my hair, which means like, if I didn't go swim to that day, like it is a waste of all of this product that's in my <laughs> hair. And I have to get in the water, even though I'm putting a swim, I have very long hair, swim cap over it. And that kept me accountable all day. So when three o'clock came around, like I didn't have a choice. I've had this leave-in conditioner in my hair all day. I needed to get into that pool because uh, I don't wash my hair very often. Okay. So that's how <laughs> I kept myself accountable. I love yeah. to hear from you. So I had a choice. Yeah. And, and even stuff like, you know, if you're trying to eat healthy, you know, you don't keep sweets in the house, right? <laughs> it's stuff like that where you're like, I have a goal. So I need to put myself in a place where I am set up to not... Um, do the thing that I said that I want to do. So it can either be, you know, getting help, but then also setting yourself up for not being able to do that. So I, here's my thing. So I want to as much as possible, and I can't always do this because I'm a mom and my kids kill this for me every, almost every night, but I want to sleep for eight hours, right? As much as possible. It doesn't always happen. Seven is, you know, is good, but eight is even better. So on my calendar, I have an eight hour block of sleep. Mm. So if I have to be somewhere, you know, take my kids to school at a certain time, I have my, my wake up time. And then I've got like a morning routine and a night routine. And so that's what eight, 10, 10 hours of my day. I'm, I'm supposed to be focused on those things. That is one way that I hold myself accountable. And then I've got alarms going off like, oh, it's time to put your retainers in. And mm -hmm. oh, it's time to make sure that the kids are getting ready for bed um, and doing all these things. And so um, structure is a huge thing for me, aside from the, the all the different outside support that I get, but really setting, you know, setting really solid to-do lists because um, I am juggling Literally, I, I spent some time trying to figure out what my routines are. And I have these different areas, including a morning and nighttime routine. But aside from those, I've got 13 different things that I'm trying to juggle. Four different aspects of my work, mm -hmm. um, four, four or five that are you know related to home and the kids and money and my health and the house, all of those things. They're all things that I need to deal with every single day. And it's not the sexiest conversation, but it's like, oh, you know, I'm also volunteering to run a trip to DC for my younger son that's happening in February. I also substitute teach. Like there's all of these things that I have to kind of touch every day in order to make sure that it it stays streamlined. And then um, if, I, if I fall off and don't do anything, then it just starts this buildup of like, oh, I'm feeling behind. And then it creates yeah. this overwhelm. And so one of my big things is that I need to stay out of um, super stress because of the fact that I have a um, autoimmune disorder. Mm. I lose my hair when I stress out too much. I actually mm. ha have been stressed in the last few months. So I have a bald spot right in the back of my head right That's now, hard. which is really annoying. Um, and so I have to hold myself accountable to not be stressed. So I can't get in fights with people <laughs> like arguments. Mm -hmm. I can't, um, you know, I can't cry a lot. <laughs> not that, you know, not that I can't cry, but it's like, I have to manage my emotions and process my emotions. And I am a emotional AF person. So <laughs> it, it really like, I have to stay out of drama. Like I can only watch it because I know that it's, it has nothing to do with me. Right. Um, but I, I have, for the last 10 years, had to hold myself accountable to not being stressed, which means mm -hmm. that I can't put myself in situations where I'm dealing with difficult people, um, that I'm over committing myself. And that's the hardest one for me, is I love to do a lot of things, as you can already tell by all the things that I mentioned. Um, but I've had to tone it down. And it's crazy to even think that I'm I've toned it down because I'm still, my, my life is very, very full, but it's that shift of doing things that I want to do versus doing things that I felt felt like I needed to do or was just doing mm -hmm. because it helped people, other people, or it made other people happy. Like I have to focus on making mm -hmm. myself happy now. And that's my biggest um, accountability factor that I have to hold to. So a lot of like the social aspect of what I do is very targeted. It's like specific people that I want to see. Um, you know, I have to choose um, and then I have to 
every weekend I have to try to have one day where I don't have anything crazy going on just so that I can um, manage my stress. So. I love this. So, <laughs> so two things that I just have to commend you on. One is I love people who are open to being vulnerable for the benefit of others. And uh, don't forget all of April's info is in the show notes below, but connect with her across social media. And I commend you for one of the posts that you put out there very honestly, showing that bald spot on the back mm -hmm. of your head as a result of losing your hair from this stress. So I commend you on being vulnerable and sharing that. And the second thing is there is like, I'm listening to your story and I like, there's just this deep knowing of yourself mm -hmm. and of understanding your limits and boundaries so that you can work within that to stay accountable within the choices that you have, like you are deciding what you are going to be accountable for and you are equally choosing what's not on that list and what does not get prioritized or which is what's yeah. not a possibility. And so before we dive into this next part, which is like I want to, I want to dive into this. Like, what makes people not accountable, and why do people struggle with accountability? But before yeah. we do, share with us a little bit more about your circles, because that's an that's something that people can learn more about. Tell us. Yeah. Um. So, just like me needing all this accountability and really thinking about, you know, what is it that I do to support? And I've always historically looked at myself, looked. Yeah, looked at myself as someone who has, when I've committed to something, I 95% of the time get it done. And the only times that I haven't gotten something done in the timeline that I had created was either because it was something that I couldn't control or I let myself burn out. And so my timelines are a little bit longer these days. You know, I, I'm writing a second book right now that I. Uh, <laughs> that is going to take me forever to write, but I have so much, so many ideas. I just need the time to, to write it. And I, but I also want to do it in a way that's not stressful because the first book was super stressful and it was a book about work-life balance. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, oh, I stressed myself out writing this Naturally. book. Um, and so, um, but what has kind of come out of writing the first book was, you know, how can I help more people? Um, I was a coach and I mean, I'm still, I still am a coach, but I primarily worked with people one-on-one, -on -one, but I was, had this calling to try to help people on a, on a larger scale, but still with almost the intimacy that you get with a one-on-one -on -one coach. And so about, what was it? 28, 2017, um, I started this pilot of some accountability program. I actually started it, um, Christine, we met at uh, world domination summit. Mm -hmm. So this came out of, um, the 2017 conference, I decided to do this pilot where I was like, people want accountability, but what does that mean? How do I, how can mm -hmm. I support you and hold, help you hold, hold yourself accountable? And it has evolved into this current um, intimate community that is focused on um, adults who are just trying to get their stuff done, but making sure that they're focusing on the right things, giving them the opportunity to plan more intentionally. So we start with a uh, retreat every October where we plan the entire year. And, you know, by plan, it's not like I'm going to do this at 414 on April 16th, 2025. It's not that, but it's, it's really, what are the goals that you want? And we're looking at it from a more holistic place. So, you know, sometimes you might join different support programs that are focused on just your business or just for health or just for relationships or just for life. Um, we look at everything. We look at health and wellness. We look at your relationships. We look at, um, you know, making sure that you're having fun, um, family, money, career, all of the things, because you have to allocate some time in your life to think about money, your career, your friendships. Um, and so we look at it from a more balanced perspective. And once we create that plan, then we spend the rest of the year holding you accountable to that plan. And the beauty of it is that like we acknowledge that things change, right? Mm -hmm. We started doing these retreats in 2020 when the pandemic happened. <laughs> and so people made all these plans. I had these grandiose plans on how I was going to grow this accountability success circle and had to change it. And so we try to stay adaptable. So when things change, when new things happen, like you realize that you're going to be growing your family or, you know, you suffer a loss, um, you have to change your plans. But we want to at least try to have some sort of 
focus to to help drive us because otherwise we're just coming from a reactive place and just doing all the things and mm-hmm. that can lead you to burnout and a lot of the people who have been in 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 our circle they have experienced burnout before and they know that trying to overcommit or set too high goals that are you know going to burn you out in the end is not the way to go so we try to look at it from a more holistic perspective we don't you know, I think a lot of people think accountability is, you know, like, go do your thing. Let's do it now. You know, where it's like a drill sergeant kind of thing. Mm-hmm. This is not that kind of thing. We look at, you know, failure as much as uh, as a learning than, um, oh, you, you messed up. You, mm-hmm. you know, you're not holding yourself accountable. We take a look at why um, you're letting yourself uh, either struggle or resist what it is that you said you want to do and maybe it's just not the right goal or maybe um the path that you're choosing to take is not the right path that is right for you um or you know you are not focused on something that is really in you know your best interest to do and so as we create these plans then we start taking action on them and when we see the resistance we we try to problem solve that mm. and knowing that everybody is unique and different um we have to you know kind of reflect on you know what's working and what's not and what can we change if it's not working and what can we keep doing if it is if it is working Mm -hmm. so um it's yeah so it's just a community that helps focus on goals and everybody's got a different life so it's not like you know we're all trying to accomplish goals sometimes in these types of groups it can feel competitive but it's not competitive because everybody's working on different things everybody has different focuses all at the same time we do these 30-day goal challenges throughout the year to let you focus on what you want to focus on and of course the rest of your life is happening we're all working on multiple goals throughout the year um at the same time but what is the one thing that you want to take focal point so like for me right now we're in the middle of a goal challenge we call it goal 30 so i'm on we're on day 14. my whole goal was not to lose my shit this month because it's one of the busiest <laughs> months of the year. And so the way that I was going to do that was I wanted to like post something on social media, but that wasn't, that was like an, a, a bonus, but I really wanted to just make sure that I was doing activities every day that would um, fill my cup and not mm. just do a lot of work because this is the busiest month of the year, but I also don't want to feel depleted doing the things like my kids' birthdays are happening right now. I've, we've got all these like concerts spring concerts at school um just the craziness of school in general um and i i wanted to be present and happy for for those things and not feel like oh god this is another thing to do but i also want to make sure i can get as much work done before summer hits because when my kids are home my productivity plummets Mm -hmm. so it's it's one of those months where it's like i have to get through it but i wanted to do it in a in a happy way and so we spend this time kind of looking at ourselves and I wanted to post on social media every day. I was like, you know what? The, the thing that's going to fill my cup is I'm going to play the ukulele every day. I lasted four (laughs) days. And then I was like, I'm so tired. I feel like I'm going to die. I need to focus on sleep. And so, um, (laughs) so I stopped with the ukulele, but like, I'm still playing, but I'm just trying to think about like, okay, I, 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 I made the goal. I am am loving (laughs) the intentionality. So like what I'm hearing from this is like, there is a lot of intentionality before committing to be Mm -hmm. accountable toward that thing. Because it's hard. Like, I I think that like what, especially in my old world as a fitness trainer and in the exercise world, one of the top things I'd hear all the time is like, I want to lose 10 pounds by summer. And it'd be like, why? Like, why do you want to do that? Like, aside Mm -hmm. from obviously the amazing vanity portion of it and all the other things, but it's like, not only is what April's breaking down for us, like there's intentionality behind what she's going to be accountable for, but within her group, it's like, we are humans. Life Mm -hmm. changes, you know? And it's like too often life will, life will always guaranteed always to change, but we are not pivoting with it. When the road starts turning left, we got to start turning left with it. And that might mean changing how you are accomplishing your goal or what that yes. looks like and therefore what you are holding yourself accountable to in that time. And so if what she's talking about is of interest to you, obviously everything is in the show notes below, but tell us, April, how can people find it? Yeah, you can go to accountabilitysuccesscircle.com. Um, that's basically, you know, you can check it out. We have free trials running all the time um, because, you know, 
sometimes it's it's not for everybody but it also is something that um it is something that is a long game um you know i think a lot of people want to accomplish goals with the quick fix right like yeah. or it's like oh i want to lose weight so i'll just go on ozempic like i want the quick fix mm -hmm. this is not and this might be to my detriment in terms of me as a as a businesswoman. This is not a long game. But like what I promise is, you know, you've got people who have your back. You have people who who know you to your core. It's not just like you're in this community where you're just talking and nobody's acknowledging you. Like we we really, really focus on deep connection because that's another part of accountability. When more people are, know what it is mm -hmm. that you're trying to accomplish and know who you are, they have a invested interest in seeing you succeed because we're all working as a team together to succeed mm -hmm. together. And so, um, yeah, that's a, that's that's where we're at. Oh, I love um, that. All of that, it's in the show notes. We're about to talk about the bad stuff. But actually, oh. I, would, I would love for you to react to my, my number one way Way that I personally stay accountable to something. So it. anytime I have, uh, what does BHAG stand for? I I, I call big, it big, like big hairy ass goal. Big something like that. Yeah, it's basically something that's really hard. Like your big dream, like your big something. Like oh, this yeah. is gonna be a really tough one. Like triathlon training for me is just mm -hmm. logistical stuff and putting the stuff in my hair was was helpful but when i have like the big dreams the big ones like oh this is going to be hard like oh my god i tell the most critical and important sorry critical meaning they criticize me a lot <laughs> mm, okay criticizing person and the person who loves me uh is amongst the ones that loves me the most and that's mm -hmm. my sister my okay. sister is me, but like 10,000 times more intense, 20,000 times smarter <laughs> and like 30,000 times prettier than I am. Oh. But when I tell her, like, I have this goal, she, like, she will keep me accountable. And it's not in a like loving deep sense. Like we hear in April's amazing community, yes. it's the, <laughs> like, you will effing disappoint me if you do not do this thing. And so mm -hmm. when I tell her the thing, like I better be getting it done. Um, yeah. she holds me accountable in that way. So, <laughs> yeah. What's, what's your number one? I'm curious. What's how to hold myself accountable. Yeah. I'm trying to think, I mean, yeah, mine is definitely a lot more gentle because of the fact that I, <laughs> I'm, not, I I'm not a gentle person. I'll just be honest and put that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why like everybody's different, right? It's um, I used to do that thing, but I I just know that I have limitations in terms of stress because I I can get anything done, right? Mm -hmm. I can set a timeline and I will make it happen. Like I will, you know, uh, as long as I know that the deadline is there. Right. Because sometimes I'll be like, oh, I have a deadline for something Then I, you know, but I, once I know that there's a deadline, like I will meet that deadline unless it's physically not possible. Um, and then I'll have a conversation. But I think, you know, because of what I've gone through, um, I know that I, time pressure stresses me out a lot. And so I, when I do some sort of big hairy goal, it is just a matter of saying it. So I think I have said that my next book, which is called The Accomplishment Project is yes. going to come out, but I've been saying that for two years, so and I'm still writing it. So, um, it, but it, it's going to hold me accountable because people know and it's out there. And so, if I don't, I I will typically not um, commit to something unless I know that I can see it through. The timeline might look mm -hmm. different, but it's going yeah. to happen. Um, you know, I and and I will say things with a soft like commit, like I'm gonna try to. Um, traditionally publish this book. So I'm going to have to get like an agent and I'm going to have to try to pitch, which scares the Jesus out of me. But so I'm not fully committing to that, but I'm entertaining the idea. So there's a difference between how I say I'm going to do something versus I think I'm going to do something. Um, because once I commit, it's it's happening. It doesn't even matter. Um, I'm, I'm mentally committed to it. The only reason that it wouldn't happen is because there was something that I didn't know about the process that is out of my control that I that I just physically can't do either because it's a um, direct conflict with my priorities or my values. Um, and, you know, and that's so I mean, yeah, holding myself accountable is really a, a verbal thing for me to just 
come out and say it because if I anybody agree. knows that I'm doing it, I have to do it. But um, She's doing it for yeah. herself. So if yeah. you're listening or watching this podcast today, I would say the two things that you could consider for yourself, one, whether you're putting it out there, putting it out there to the world, I will blast things on social media being like, I'm going to, I'm committed to doing this, whether like I am actually, actually committed to that or not. Put it out there, <laughs> put it out to the world or say it aloud to yourself or mm -hmm. say it to someone who is someone that you care about. Let someone, whether it's the world, the person you care about, or you know about your goal. And two, even, even if life changes, put a stake in the ground on a deadline, put it out to the world, give yourself a deadline. You mm -hmm. <laughs> only you will know, or only you will care the most around if, if that doesn't happen, but at least start with those two things. Yeah. April, are you ready to talk about the bad sides of things? Oh yeah. Bad let's do sides it. of accountability. Yeah. I would love to hear, because obviously you worked with a lot of people. Like mm -hmm. what is the heart like what is the hardest thing that someone needs to overcome to be accountable? Because um, one thing that I consistently hear, because a lot of people are like, you just went out there and did it. Like you left the corporate world and just became a YouTuber and now you do the thing. And it's like, yeah. well, thank you for simplifying the last four years of my life. But <laughs> when when I think about the commitment I make, I had a hard time keeping myself accountable in the corporate world. Yeah. And that's because you should you should finish that project by this date. You should do this before year end. This needs to be done before the end of fiscal year, like, right? The shoulds. You should yeah. do this. You should move up in your career. You should get promoted. You, ugh, like, let me just barf. Let me just take a break to barf for a yeah. minute thinking about that environment. <laughs> totally. And that was hard because I, in, in my heart, and I know this is hard for some of you to believe, but I have a heart. In my heart, I was like, I it just doesn't like, I'm not, I'm not in it. Like, I'm not passionate about that. And when yeah. a lot of people are like, oh, you're a YouTuber that flies drones and has this podcast. I'm like, no, I make the video that is so helpful. Someone is not only inspired to take the trip, but they will actually go see the world when they otherwise would not. Yeah. I don't help people to push a button and fly a drone. Flying a drone is freaking easy. I help people to explore the world from the best view in the house. And that's yeah. from the sky. I don't, I don't talk all day on a podcast because I want to hear myself speak. I actually, I don't know if you know this, April. I turn off ad revenue on my podcast because mm. I want people to have a perfect listening experience with it. Awesome. Because this is a passion project for me because I want people to think about things 1% more differently and be a little bit more badass today than they were yesterday. Yeah. When you understand that that's the why, that is my why, and that mm -hmm. is what's in my heart, it is very easy for me to stay accountable because I'm very clear, right? Think about where we started this podcast episode, having claiming what, like why you want to do something. I have this yeah. very clear North star in these three things that I create around. And so it's easy for me, easier, not easy, easier for me to stay accountable versus like, you should finish that project because the client wants it by blah, blah, blah time. Like that's yeah. hard. Yeah. And so I feel like one of the biggest and I don't want to call it failures, but maybe hangups that people have is they're not clear around what they're committing to and why mm. before they start putting accountability tactics towards something. What, yeah. What's your reaction to that? Yeah. I mean, so here's the thing when it comes to doing, taking action on anything, we have some sort of expectation on what that should look like. And as soon as you don't take the action that you expect to do to keep yourself on that momentum track toward that goal, you immediately see it as a failure. So failure is one of the biggest hangups. It's like, oh, I'm in this 30-day challenge and I didn't like comment on day one. So I didn't do what I was supposed to do on day one. So you know what? Forget it. I... I have to start mm. over. I got to start over. Right. And so then they have to create, recreate that momentum all over again to start, mm. or they'll go maybe four days and then stuff will blow up. And they're like, oh, I failed. 
and it's only four days. How am I going to, okay, so I'll just give up and I'll start again when I'm ready. And so there's this feeling of like, when I'm ready, when I'm ready, when I'm ready. Mm. And then that day never comes because it's so hard to create, you know, it's, it's the whole metaphor of like, you're trying to push a boulder, right? And if you're trying to push the boulder, it's going to be at rest and you're trying to push it. But once you get it moving, then all of a sudden you can start pushing and you've got that momentum. Same thing works with goals. When you, um, if you don't have that activation energy to then get into that momentum and stay in that momentum, as soon as you fall off, you fall off. And um, then you have to recreate that. And that is so much harder than continuing to do the thing. And I struggle with this all the time too, because I'm juggling 50,000 different things or 15, but like, it's still a lot. And so, um, you know, one day I might be able to say, okay, I'll, I'll get back on the horse. But then it starts to be two days, then three days, then four mm -hmm. days, then 24 days. And, you know, it's just building it, building up. And then you, you know, you kind of give up and then you have to start the wheel all over again. So that is the number one thing that I see is that, you know, people will take the activation energy, they won't act on it. And then they have to recreate and start that over. And so it's it's almost like the car that won't start. We're just still, still just waiting here for the car to start. But once the car's starting, then you can move and go wherever you want. What's one um, thing that you would recommend for someone where they're listening to this and they're like, that's me. I keep losing. Yeah. I mean, this is a lot of people. I mean, and I think it's just that when you don't do something successfully, you have to consider should I try tomorrow to do the same thing mm. or is it time to change the goal? Mm. And then if you make the commitment to tomorrow you and, and, it, and you still fail, then you ask yourself, do I try to start again with what I had intended to do or do I change the goal? Um, here's an example. I, at the beginning of the year was like, all right, I'm, I'm tired of procrastinating on this book project. So here's what happens to me. I get started, I have momentum, and then something happens and I have to put it aside because it's the one thing that is not making me money right now. I need to commit to it every day to keep it going. But if my life has to blow up for some reason or I just have a really hard day, that's one thing that is going to have to go. And so at the beginning of 2024, I'm like, okay, I'm going to write one 30 minutes a day, every day for the rest of the year. I got through nine days and then I couldn't do it again. So then I waited and then maybe about a month ago, I was like, I'm going to finally change the goal because I clearly haven't been doing anything. I've just been postponing and deciding to deal with it later. So I, um, in the, I think it was maybe in April, I decided, okay, I'm going to go five minutes a day. Mm. So I wrote for five minutes a day. I went maybe two or three weeks <laughs> and then um, then the end of April, my life blew up again. And so now I'm just like, okay, five minutes. And anytime I fell off, I was able to say, well, I could make up today and yesterday because it's just mm -hmm. 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. But then I went a, a period of like a couple weeks. So it's been since my birthday, I didn't write. And I was, I don't know, I, I was just exhausted at that point. So I was like, I need to just rest because I can't write when I'm fatigued. So it's been you know, three weeks <laughs> since I've written and maybe I can sit and write for two hours, but I'm just building up this bank of like, if I want to get caught up, I need to write mm. two hours now. And are you beating yourself up about this in the process or are you being accepting of yourself? I'm curious. I There's a part of me that beats myself up, but I have to remember all the other things that I'm doing. So if mm -hmm. I was writing this book and that was all I was doing, then I would beat myself up. Because mm. it's like five minutes. How can you not do five minutes? But like, you know, I have to keep the house clean. I have to, yeah. you know, check finances. And I literally look at the 15 things that I have to do every day and say, if I were to allocate 15 minutes per day, mm -hmm. um, how full does my calendar look? I'm booked solid till 6 p.m. So if I fall off one day, that just imagine how much of a pressure cooker that leaves for the rest of the days if I try to catch up. Because sometimes I do need to spend 15 minutes going through my credit card statements, you know, yeah. and or just a little bit every day. And so um, I give myself grace because I know that I have prioritized the 15 things that I have to do. And, you know, morning routine, night routine is 
non-negotiable. My kids, non-negotiable. Everything else it might be driven by deadlines and, and comes in this priority order or, you know, if it's easy to to cross off my list. But, um, you know, that's one thing that, you know, now I need to revisit. Can I catch up on and do that? Or do I just wipe the slate clean and just start with mm. the five minutes again? Because I can do the five minutes. It was just I hit a, a patch where I kind of had to let go of everything because that I was just so not in the right over. mindset. And, and, and then I have to start over. And, and that leaves, you know, it's, it's also like people who might struggle with mental health, right? It's like you can, when you're feeling good, you can do things. But if you, um, if you, you know, have little bouts of depression or if you have migraines or, you know, different things like that, you can't keep that consistency. And mm -hmm. so when you get to the point where you can't keep consistency, then you have to look at the bigger picture of like, am I doing too much? Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I realized um, is that um, also when you commit to something, you can be on a roll. And, uh, and I did this with my, um, my, my run training. So I, two years ago, or I guess it's three years ago now, coming out of the pandemic, I gained all this weight and I was like, hell no, I'm not going to buy a whole new wardrobe. I'm going to hold myself accountable by getting a running coach and I'm going to start running again because I remember when I ran before I lost all this weight. So I'm going to do it again. It was successful. But then my goal changed to like, let me see if I can run a 5K. And I was running faster. I ran like three 5Ks and I was getting faster. Then I was like, ooh, maybe I'll try 10Ks. And I kept on getting faster. Then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I want to go and see if I can beat my half marathon time from ooh. 10 years ago. So then I started this two year, like I'm going to go, but here's what happened. I was almost over holding myself accountable because I was like chasing this, this adrenaline rush mm. that everything else in my life was kind of blowing up. But I was like, this is the thing that I will not give up because I am on such a path. But did I really need to do that? No, it was just like wanting to. And so I hit the half marathon goal. I, I think I beat it by a minute and 47 from 10 years ago. This is, I had to run five half marathons to do it, but I did it or maybe it was four. And the fifth one that I signed up for, cause I was like, just in case I don't beat it, I'm going to commit to one more. I was like, I'm done. I, I hit my goal and now I don't want to run half marathons anymore. I literally sloughed through the last half marathon and I was like, I'm not running half marathons anymore because I don't even know what I'm doing it for anymore. Um, so it was like, I almost overheld myself accountable because everything in my life was, was taking a back seat to my health. And I'm like, no, I want a well-rounded everything. So I needed to change the goal. So now I'm like, I just need to run and enjoy it. <laughs> that's my goal now. And that's oh, what I'm trying I to hold myself that. to. And so there's that piece of like, we get stuck in the momentum and we chase the adrenaline that we get from it or the, um, what, yeah, it, it's, is it adrenaline? Yeah. It it's, is. it's that mm -hmm. we're chasing that. And then when we can't sustain it or maintain it, then we hit this like lull and then you have to reevaluate. Um, and that's where burnout comes from too. It's like, I need to keep on doing these things. So there's that piece of like over committing to things that we don't need to commit to. That can be an issue when it comes to accountability um, because we have to constantly look at the picture of like, what is it that I'm doing? And am I doing all the right things in this moment, in this day? And we don't have the time to always look for that stuff. And so, um, yeah, that's another, another issue where it's that like you either lose really the momentum or you chase the momentum too hard. So I love that. So I think, I mean, it brings us back to what we were talking about, right? Right. Which is around like, why are you doing it in the first place? Like coming down to the why. And one of the things that I both uh, I, I use this on people who are coming to me with their goals and, you know, asking for my advice on various things. And they will ask me something and I will ask them, why are you choosing to do that? And after they've asked, they've answered that, I'd say, well, why? Why? And I will continue to ask why until you have peeled away the layers of this onion all the way to its core. Because if you really focus in on asking yourself why that many times and get to the real reason you want to do the thing, there mm -hmm. are things like, again, like it felt easier to stay accountable to running because you were riding that high. The adrenaline yeah. kept you going to do more things and you eventually burned out from running. And it's why you got to come back to that original why so that you can check in and be like, okay, like 
cool. I mean, I am keeping myself accountable, but am I keeping myself accountable to the right thing? Because yeah. uh, again, honest story. I love staying honest on this podcast. When I first met April at World Domination Summit, I, I have, uh, is this true? Yes. I have never achieved, I'll say achieved, burnout to this level. And it was because I was keeping myself accountable to a goal that I had. The goal that I had was, okay, I made this goal in uh, 2021. In 2021, going back to asking for help to stay accountable toward things, I had gotten a speaking coach who would help me to understand how I could get on stage at conferences. And my goal was to start speaking at conferences in 2024. That was my goal. Again, very long term. I had only started attending conferences. I just recently became a creator the prior year. And what happened was in January of 2022, I got my first speaking offer for March of 2022, and then went on to get three to four more speaking gigs that year, all back mm -hmm. to back to the point where I was flying red eye from one to the next. And by the time I met you at World Domination Summit, I was done with going mm -hmm. to conferences. I didn't even want to go to World Domination Summit as an attendee, but went on a whim because uh, she's on this podcast. Uh, you can catch her episode with Erica Vervo. Asked me yeah. to take a chance on meeting someone at World Domination Summit, which is Travis Sherry. Lots of info on that is in the podcast as well. But when I arrived at World Domination Summit, I had kept myself too accountable and reached my goal too quickly that I could not see that it was burning me out and spent, actually, I don't know if you know this, April, I actually purposely canceled the rest of my travel for the summer. Yes, and I went I went to the Bahamas where I could lose my shit and just be burnt out and fly my drone 16 times a day. It was amazing. Yeah. But that that was being too accountable towards something and not keeping a pulse on something that you talked about, which is so important, which is grace. And mm -hmm. I think about some of like the mental health things that you talked about, because when I think of so many friends that I have who are creators, we are not only working very hard, but we are working very hard publicly. And so when mm -hmm. you are posting to social media, a lot of people ask me this question, Christine, help, help keep me accountable. First of all, I'm like, no, just join April's accountability. <laughs> like how, how often should I post on social media? whatever channel that they're talking about. And my answer is always work backwards. How often do you think you can commit to that many yeah. times per week? I mean, every day is great. I used to post twice a day, but like, that's a lot. And it, think about what makes sense for you back into how often you think you can be accountable to posting that many times per week and do it for at least three months. And the way, the reason why I say three months is because when you are posting to social media, oh my God, that went viral. Oh, wow. That got three views. Oh my gosh. A hundred people saw that. Wow. Zero people saw that. Whoa, a million people saw that. And like this mental health game that social media plays on you is insanity. Yeah. Like you never know if it's going to perform well or not. And not only that, everyone is watching you because they can see your numbers of whether you're killing it or you're sucking really badly. Yeah. And it's hard to want to stay accountable because now it's like, life happens. Are you giving yourself grace to change or life happens? Do you give yourself grace to change the story of what you might be talking about? Life happens. Are you, or do you know why you're posting in the first place? Because when you create for the public, the public will criticize you. Yep. And a lot of people, you know, don't realize the amount of hate that creators have to deal with on the, on the quiet side of the DMS. Like yep. I, I am getting hate and your feet are crazy. full and eggplant photos on the daily. And I just have to deal with that. And from a mental health perspective, I'm still committed to posting X number of times per week. And so grace and figuring out what's right for you and understanding that life happens and you need to pivot. And also <laughs> if you're going viral all the time, whether you are posting on social media or you're running and practicing for a race like April is, be aware of what the adrenaline can do. Because you might find yourself in the sexy Bahamas, burnt out and flying drones like <laughs> I was. <laughs> totally. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, I also know you have a resource around like a quick checklist for like accountability tactics for on your website. Is this, do. Is this is something that you can check out. It will be in the show notes. Can yeah. we do a rapid fire real quick on just like 
three quick and easy accountability tactics that someone can start using today? Yes. Okay. So, you know, I think number one, and so this is, this is a step-by-step process just because, um, cause you can't really start holding yourself accountable until you do these things. Um, number one is do a self check, um, check in on yourself and say like, where am I at? How am I feeling? Where in my life am I like kicking ass and where in my life do I want to focus my attention or what areas of my life need some TLC? That's the first step, right? Cause you have to know where you are to figure out where you want to go. Um, once you've identified those steps, the second thing that you should do is ask yourself, what do I want and why, you know, um, if I were to look at myself right now and say like, what is it that I want? You know, I just, I just need to survive the next couple of weeks. So what does that look like? Why do I want to survive the next couple of weeks? Because I can't have this bald spot grow any, any larger. Um, And so, and then, you know, that third step is then once you identify what you want, you got to reel back and say, what are the actions that I need to take in order to make that thing happen? Right. Cause there's the, there's the, vision and the what you intend to do and the things that you have to do to support that thing and identify those things and then just start checking those things off your list yeah um figuring them out but then once you start taking that action start over do the cycle do a self check once you've taken action oh okay i got eight hours of sleep how did that make me feel that made me feel good i should do that again Mm. i'm gonna try to do that again tomorrow if I woke up and said, you know, I still feel crappy. Maybe it either needs means I need more sleep or that there might be something else. So you have to kind of go through this like problem solve on a day-to-day basis. This daily reflection practice is a great way to hold yourself accountable because it makes sure Mm -hmm. that you are focused on the right things every day. It's not just like, well, I set this goal that I wanted to accomplish by the end of 2024 and I'm just taking action on it. I'm thinking about like, do I still want to do that? Let me, let me show you something. So I, I do these, um, retreats. Um, so like this is, this was, this is the folder that has like my plan for 2024. And for those who are only listening, she's got this nice, this is her color purple folder that says (laughs) the accountability circle on it. Everybody got a, got a color that they wanted, but of course, you know, I'm going to be purple. Um, so Every, I have my entire plan that I put together. I actually put this together in August, but um, to, to say what is it that I wanted to accomplish in 2024. Every month I'll sit there and I'll look at like, what did I say? You know, there's some things that I had in here that I'm like, oh, you know, I think I want to start coaching around ADHD. Been thinking about it, kind of put it on the shelf and then it's kind of re- resurfaced. But I have what I want to do all in this, in this folder. Hmm. And I just revisit it to say like, Hey, is this something that I want to do? I had travel as I do every year on my, on my plans. And we had, um, now that I have a teenager who is in high school and has all of these things going on all the time, I'm literally a, um, mother Uber, just drive around waiting for my kid to tell me where I need to pick him up. And that's become my life. I've had to table travel and it makes me so sad but um then the next time i travel i get to see christine in person so yes. um but things change but i always have something to anchor myself back to to say like these are the things that i said and so when people ask me throughout the year like hey do you want to be the uh, parent rep for this swim team you know mm-hmm. you want to be the the head communicator i'm like uh, do i want to do that do i want to do that i have to pause because was it part of my plan and i can add it in if i want to but mm. what what do i have to sacrifice in exchange so it's it's that constant loop of holding yourself accountable if you're not going to you know solicit help from the outside going through this feedback loop of like you know how am i feeling what do i want to do tomorrow and then doing the thing tomorrow and then going back and saying how did that make me feel that is it's the such one a, way. It's such a counterintuitive thing because when people think about accountability, it's like, well, you want me to check in with myself? And when mm. when I went through in the corporate world, the leadership program, that was the first thing we did was in all the actions and all the things that we were doing, it was this check-in with ourselves of like, like, it, did that feel right? Like, is this the way I should be going after that thing? It's like just spending that time to reflect 
with some intention to see if it's right. But I also love that, like, you know, you're, you're breaking it down and this is a, a daily check-in. This is a, a, mm. a frequent check-in. And yeah. that's one of the things I think about with this podcast. It's all about that 1%. It's just that 1%. And even if you're going after the crazy, big, hairy goal, like here's an example with drones. People always think that the first step toward flying a drone is buying a drone. I'm like, why would you buy a drone? Like, do you, do you actually want to fly a drone? Are you sure this is the right choice for you? I'm like, if you break it down, like what are all the steps toward this goal, becoming an amazing drone pilot? Maybe the first step is before you buy a drone, go into a free online simulator and just try mm. that for five minutes, not even an hour, but five minutes. And like, if it gives you a headache or you don't really like it, you should probably save a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars and not buy the yeah. drone. Or like, if you're afraid of all of the laws with a drone, because most people are like, oh my God, the laws, then why wouldn't you go take the free law test called, oh my God, what is it called? <laughs> now you're like, like did not that test. Um, I will put that out of my mind. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that is something that you can do where you can take this free online test. It's required anyway. So you can understand the drone laws beforehand. These are like small steps. And then you do what April is talking about. You check in. How does it feel? Reflect on that. Like, did you love being in the simulator? If not, reevaluate. Like, <laughs> yeah. sure, it makes sense. Oh, oh, I love this. Okay, Yay, April. I don't so know if you. I don't know if you know. I asked this question on my podcast. In we'll the world of accountability, are you mm -hmm. a badass? Why or why not? I think so. <laughs> why? Tell us. Well, here's the thing. I think that um, accountability is something that people need. I don't think they realize that they need it because they want the the more tangible things. Uh, yeah. um, and the fact that I'm willing to commit to that, it's the slow grow, right? It's the day to day, like one percent that I am providing for people. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, people might not want to, you know, sell one percent, but Everything that I do, I do out of passion. And, you know, granted, I am in a place where I can operate my business out of passion. So I do things unconventionally because of that, but I can do things based on how I want because I'm focused on the passion of that. And I know accountability is something that I need. It's just that I need to show people that it is, it is that consistency and um, the, the dedication to yourself and holding yourself accountable to yourself every day that makes you progress so much faster than these strategies where, you know, you're, you're going all in and going hard all at once on a super big, hairy goal, um, putting yourself in this position of burnout where then you're going to have to go and over to the Bahamas and recover for however long because you're not focused on that consistency. What would it feel like to be happy every single day, you know, like, or just happier than just riding the highs and then having to recover with lows? Cause mm -hmm. I've done that. Yeah. Um, and it, it, you know, being more stable, I guess, um, with your, the progress of your goals might not feel as adrenaline chasing, but I also don't hit the lows so hard anymore. And that's always been something that I've been trying to, um, you know, avoid moving forward because of the way that it impacts my body. Um, and so feeling that, you know, that, that 1% increase or 1% growth or that just that little step of being further along tomorrow than I was yesterday is what I try to do for people. And, you know, I don't, there's not a lot of people that want to commit to that, right? Because it's not necessarily the, the moneymaker, right? But the impact that I see in the lives of the people that are in my community and the fact that like, I know off the top of my head, what people are working on right now today, um, you know, I care. I really care about seeing people um, accomplish their goals. And so, um, yeah, the, the fact that I care, period, and it's not just a business idea. It is really something yes. that I want to do to help people. Um, that's why I'm a badass. That <laughs> is badass. And tell us one more time. It's all in the show notes for you. Where can people find you? So you can find me on Instagram at the cheerful mind, all one word. And um, I'm also 
the cheerful mind.com, but uh, for the accountability success circle, which is my pride and joy, my baby community. Um, and one of the things I'm most proud of um, accountability success circle.com. And all of that is in the show notes for you. Yay. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Oh, it was super, super fun. I always love chatting with you. I'm going to be honest, this is one of a few podcast episodes that you're going to see with April on my channel. Make sure you check the show notes, find her, her accountability circle, her book, all the things. And also you'll find a blog post that will summarize all of the podcast episodes we do together. So all of that is going to be in there for you. If you found some value in today's podcast episode, please connect with April, connect with me. I'm at Christine Lozada everywhere. And please leave a review. It really does help to distribute this to more people. Share it with someone who needs to be more accountable. Go ask yourself why. Ask yourself why 10 times. Why is that your goal? And what are the small 1% things that you can do to go accomplish what you want in life? Because we only got one shot at the life that we are currently living right now. Make the most of it. Go forth. Be badass, and I'll see you in the next adventure. Ciao.